Hello there, my name is Dr. Shirley Evans and I'm Programme Manager for the UK Meeting Centre's Community Support Programme. This is led by the Association for Dementia Studies at the University of Worcester. I'm also a trustee of Leinster Meeting Centre, which has been running for almost five years now. We're located in Herefordshire on the Welsh borders and it is my absolute passion. I spend a lot of my spare time uh, helping to raise money uh, for the centre. The Association for Dementia Studies at the University of Worcester has involved, been involved with meeting centres since 2014, so for seven years now, and that's what I've been working on. We were part of a European project called Meeting Dem, and we worked with partners from the Netherlands, Poland and Italy. And the aim was to see whether the Dutch model of meeting centres could be implemented in uh, the UK, Poland and Italy, and whether we could experience the same benefits that they benefited from. Uh, and that was found to be the case. The meeting centres have started in the Netherlands in the early 1990s, and there are now over 175 meeting centres in the Netherlands and 200 worldwide. At the association, we have funding from the National Lottery Community Fund uh, with the key aim of setting up 15 to 20 new centres in the UK, which is what I work on on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's just a photograph of our meeting centre in Leinster, just towards the end of last year. As you can see, we're physically distanced there, but we have been able to be open since August the 4th uh, last year with reduced numbers. Hopefully we're moving out of that now. So you might be asking, what is a meeting centre? Well, a meeting centre is for people with mild to moderate dementia who live at home in the community and is very, very inclusive and friendly with a focus on both the person with dementia and the family carer. It's very much about helping both to adapt and adjust well to living with dementia, and it's underpinned by something called the adaptation and coping model. It is really a social club, generally open three days a week, around about five hours, although some meeting centres might be open for, for one day. Uh, and, and the main thing is that there is regular and ongoing support. And it's very, very local, accessible with no us and them, a very ordinary life setting. So if you went into Lemster Meeting Centre uh, or indeed Kiri Connections, you'd go in, you wouldn't necessarily know who had dementia, who was a family carer, who was staff, who were volunteers. Meeting centres generally support 16 to 20 people a day, um, plus family. Uh, so around about 60, 60 people over the course of a year. But some meeting centres might be uh, quite a bit smaller. It depends on the sort of uh, population where they're located. Another key aspect is very much around ongoing collaboration between local stakeholders, uh, which are called a planning group when we're setting up, uh, both in the planning and the implementation stages. So it's about involving all the key stakeholders, making sure you're not duplicating anything that's already there and everybody knows what's available in, in the community. And activities uh, are very wide ranging and determined by the needs and aspirations of the members with everyone contributing in some way. Generally staffed by a, a centre manager, support workers, and volunteers, although the, a couple of the meeting centres are run entirely by volunteers. Very much uh, outreach into the local community is not about shutting the door and there's the meeting centre and there's the local community, a two-way process going on there. And there's research evidence uh, based dating back nearly 20 years. So there's very good evidence from both the Dutch uh, research and our more recent UK research that people attending meeting centres experience better self-esteem and a greater feelings of happiness and belonging uh, compared with those who don't attend. Uh, those who attend most regularly show fewer of the more distressing uh, 
symptoms of dementia and a greater feeling of support as do family carers and people with dementia and family carers feel very high levels of experience high levels of satisfaction with the program seeing it as a very important way of keeping active and feeling supported and also those attending meeting centres were able to stay at home six months longer than those attending uh, usual care so there was that delay in going into residential care. What is different the same as other initiatives is you might be thinking oh well uh, such and such initiative we do that we do some of those we do that or perhaps we do all of the things at a meeting centre. I think it's more this sort of combination of aspects and this overall ethos that you can only really uh, feel not define when you actually walk into the meeting centre, that it's driven by people's interests, that it is for people with dementia and family carers, that it's very community based. And there's this key this aspect of socialisation, very much eating together and coordination and movement play, uh, play key roles there. And this underpinning of the adaptation coping model, supporting people to adjust to their changing situation. So with the UK Meeting Support Programme, uh, what we can offer is one-to-one -one consultation, uh, support to organise a community engagement event, linking people up with similar initiatives and arranging visits to existing meeting centres, access to a community of learning and practice, ongoing development of a range of resources such as a guidebook, self-assessment tools, and very importantly, uh, training, and access to a help desk. And as I mentioned, this, this ongoing support so that meeting centres don't feel that they're, they're, they're on, their own, on their own. And I'd like to hand over now to my colleague, Graham Galloway, who will talk about meeting centres in Scotland. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Shirley. Uh, my name is Graham Galloway. I'm the Chief Officer of Kerry Connections. Um, Kerry Connections is a dementia support charity based in the Angus town of Kirrymuir. Uh, we were formed originally in 2015, um, originally as a, a dementia-friendly community initiative with funding from the Life Changes Trust. Um, however, in around 2017, I first read about the, the meeting centre model. Uh, and it was at that point that I got in touch with Shirley and her team at Worcester um, to, uh, to, to chat about it and to see if there was anything we could do around the model in Kirrymuir as it really was, I felt, a fantastic match to, to build on the work we were already doing. Um, so for most of 2018, uh, we formed a, a working group to look at how we could adapt and use the model in Kirrymuir. Uh, and then in May 2019, we officially opened as the first meeting centre in Scotland. Uh, and here you can see Cabinet Secretary for Health, Jean Freeman, uh, with one of our members cutting the ribbon there at that opening ceremony. So Shirley's talked a bit about the, the theory and the research and the evidence behind meeting centres. Uh, I'd like to talk just a little bit about the, the practice and, and what they look like in reality and, and in reality here in Angus, uh, in Kirrymuir. So as Shirley said, it's very much a social club um, where people living with dementia and their families, their loved ones and their carers can come and get together uh, and take part in meaningful and stimulating social activities. Um, as you can see here, we have a really strong focus on creative activities at Curry Connections. That's one of the things we, we love to do and our members love to take part in. We're really fortunate in that we have some incredible uh, local practitioners that we work with. You can see in the picture here, uh, Christine Kidd, who is a, a local musician uh, and also a renowned trad music artist. She was actually inducted into the Trad Music Hall of Fame a few years ago. So we're incredibly lucky to have her uh, with us in, in Curry Connections. Uh, and Christine runs our community choir, but she also runs various projects with us as well, uh, including one called Orlang, which is a, a music and craft space project uh, that she runs with another local practitioner, uh, the artist Maureen Crosby. So, uh, as Shirley said, an average day at the meeting centre, if there is such a thing as an average day, I don't think there is, to be honest. Each day varies enormously, but people will come to us around 10 o'clock um, and they'll stay till 3, 4 o'clock and spend the whole day with us. Um, 
And again, as Shirley mentioned, one of the really key things of that process is lunchtime. So discussing what we're going to have for lunch, uh, discussing recipes, favourite foods, going out to the shop, buying it, coming back, preparing it, eating it, obviously, it's very, very important, uh, and then cleaning up. And all these tasks are done together. Um, it's a very, very egalitarian model. And as Shirley said, there's no us and them. Um, and her point about walking into a meeting centre not knowing who the person with dementia was and who the staff member, the volunteer was, is, is something that really is, is very evident in Kerry Connections. So um, that was a little bit about how we worked before uh, COVID happened. Uh, obviously, the past year has meant we've had to completely rethink the model. Um, meeting centres are very much about personal contact, face-to-face uh, -face contact. And we haven't been able to do that for most of this year, unfortunately. Um, so we have obviously been working remotely for most of the past year. Um, we uh, have managed to secure funding to get devices out to people that weren't digitally connected. And we're now running um, several different groups um, and one-to-one -one sessions over Zoom, but also over the telephone. Um, and one of the most successful things we've done over the past year, actually, is our hard copy newsletters that we send out. And we now send out four different newsletters, um, ranging from arts and crafts packs uh, through to a song sheet for our, our singing group, uh, and also a farming memory uh, newsletter, which is written with the assistance of a local farmer. So it's another great example of that community aspect of meeting centres that's come together in these newsletters, where our members, our family members, and the wider community is all inputting into these resources that are going out to people. Uh, one of the perhaps crazy decisions we took during lockdown uh, was to buy our own building. Um, so looking into the future, this is really where Curry Connections is going to be from now on. We picked up the keys to this building um, just at the end of January, and we're now in the process of hopefully within the next few weeks starting building work to convert it into our new meeting centre. Um, it just got the exterior picture here. Uh, you can see the outside is currently mostly car park, tarmac. Uh, we plan to turn the major uh, not not the majority but a large amount of that space into a new garden um, that again won't be just for Kerry connections it will be a garden the whole community can come and use to take part in so looking beyond uh Kerry muir uh, meeting centers are starting to develop all over scotland now uh, and Kerry connections is involved in helping to support them through the meeting center support program that shirley spoke about and you can see now we have interest all the way from Orkney down to Peebles, really the entire length and breadth of the country. So it's a really, really exciting time for meeting centres just now. Um, and if anybody is interested in finding out more, please feel free to get in touch. I'm sure either myself or Shirley would be very happy to speak to you. Thanks a lot.